Hello everyone, this is Cody from the Rancor's Brothel. No, this upload isn't a mistake. <laughs> Welcome to the first episode of our five-part Halloween special. And what's more Halloween than the investigation of a spooky old house out in Lovecraft Country? This particular scenario is a personal favorite of mine, being the first Call of Cthulhu game I ever played. It was recently reprinted in Chaosium's Mansions of Madness, Volume 1. Each night from now through Halloween, expect another spooky bedtime story from the Rancor's Brothel. If you like this content or anything else we produce, please leave us a review, drop us a note on social media, or share with a friend. The best scares are the ones you share with others. But for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy Episode 1 of the Cracked and Crooked Mance. Engage. The So, um, if this comes out, uh, my goal is to kind of have this come out on Halloween week. If not, it came out another time. Um, <laughs> those are the two options. Yeah. If this did not release <laughs> at Halloween time, if this did release Halloween time, then it came out anyway, because it was gonna. Um, but no, uh, anytime it gets to this time of the year, I always enjoy trying to run some Call of Cthulhu, some traditional spooky shit. Um, I actually have a very personal connection to this very personal but a personal connection to the exact one we're running um my great aunt died making this she did actually um uh, now i just it? feel bad <laughs> you should feel bad normally <laughs> yeah have you met me lucas should feel bad for existing um have ouch. you met me uh but because of us not for your own emo self-image <laughs> Fair. um but no anyway uh so uh, this is a this is a um a, a scenario out of Mansions of Madness, which is a reprint of the 1984 version of Mansions of Madness. I think it's actually in the introduction here. Um, but anyway, um, one of the first games that I ever remember playing, the first game of uh, Call of Cthulhu that I ever played, was the exact scenario that I'm going to run for you guys. Oh, that's um, fun. So, like, this was the first non D and D thing I had ever played. Um, and to this day, I remember the big moment now being 15 or 16 years old and getting this is probably going to be a little different from a bunch of guys in their, you know, <clears throat> not yeah, teens. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say thirties, but what's that number? Just don't worry about it. Let's move on. <laughs> start with a four. Or fuck yourself. Is what it starts with. <laughs> <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Um, but yeah, uh, so it contains a bunch of different sort of adventures. Uh, Mr. Corbett's in here. The one that I'm running is in here, which people already know if they've uh, they've read it. So this is like a classic, classic Call of Cthulhu game. And this is out of the book Mansions of Madness, Volume 1, Behind Closed Doors, which I hope they're going to do more volumes. It's just spooky mansion shit. So nothing is better, in my opinion, than Halloween time and spooky goddamn houses. Who's uh, bringing the talking dog? Uh, fail a sand check and we'll see what happens. <laughs> In the in the uh, Google Drive link that you sent us, it had a it had a pug. It did, yeah. Yep. I was like, I want to play the pug. Um. So anyway, this should be fun. It should be a spooky mansion. It should be a mystery, which will turn horrific, and uh, people may or may not live. Um, I mean, let's so pump the brakes on fun. We'll, we'll be the judge. Pirate <laughs> ghost. Uh. So. Uh, to set the scene, it is, we decided Wednesday, February 5th, 1925. Correct. Um, and, uh, you are all friends, he said in air quotes. You're all associates, um, with Are you our, talking about us? Or yes. Okay. 
uh, of, uh... Yeah, I mean, in real life, I hate that fucking guy. <laughs> That's what I was getting at. How's your character feel? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Not great. Um, uh, so if, if you'd like to, uh, I suppose before I should get too far, uh, go around, introduce yourselves, and introduce your characters. Who you'll be playing this evening. Oh, I'm getting bored of that. Uh, I am private investigator Harold Gallery from Manchester. <laughs> and, and who are you? You said introduce yourself. A twat. And your character. Oh, <laughs> I'm Name, Lucas. character. If you don't recognize my voice. Um... We have new people, so just join in on the fun. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't recognize his voice, good for you. It's also listed in the description of the game. No one looks no one at descriptions. <laughs> we talked about we user agreements about earlier. User agreements earlier yeah. You know, somebody somebody did look at one because I put a massive spoiler in a description because I thought it was fun. It's some of the only hate mail the Rancor's Brothel has ever directly gotten. That guy was like, dude, you're a prick. You ruined my game. And I'm like, well, sorry. Don't read the fine print. It's like, I didn't realize that our podcast t- tweets were going to be so popular when your table Googled it. Thanks for listening, though. <laughs> if, if you still are. Thanks for ruining that guy's game. If not, come back. <laughs> Please. Good. We always appreciate you. Um, name is Alex. I am playing Dave Masters. He is a book dealer. I am Troy. I am playing Dr. Antoine Delacroix, an occultist. Occultist. <laughs> Doctor of what? Occultism. Occult. Not an cultist. It's Astronomy. Just- Odd question. When we're referring to your character, how would you like us to refer to it? You are a doctor, after all. Dr. Antoine Delacroix. Full name? Full name. name. Oh, God. God. Holy shit! Please help save me from the monster, Dr. Antoine Delacroix. They're going to be dead by the time they get that out. Dr. Antoine Delacroix. Speak faster. I didn't go to... Look out for the monster behind you! I didn't go to astronomy school for eight yeah. years. Twelve. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> Twelve years to be called Mr. Delacroix. Yeah. Dad. You just call him dad. <laughs> You're dad now. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> uh, and I'm Tyler. I'm playing George Avery, the librarian. So again, it is, uh, whatever we said, Wednesday, February 4th, um, 1925. Um... You are all associates or friends or frenemies or whatever of um, uh, Harold Gallery, our private investigator. Um, and uh, Harold Gallery is uh, receives uh, this letter uh, shortly after the first of the month. I have put the text in the chat because I asked Troy whether or not this came with a PDF download and he said it did not. Oh, the, the book, the, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Okay. <clears throat> I suppose I should read this to everyone, huh? Uh, if you'd like to. It is addressed to you. Uh, top left corner is the letterhead stain Dodge Brothers in a very cool looking font. Um, Attorneys at Law, 14 Main Street, Gamwell, January 30th, 1925. Dear... Dash, I presume is me. Yep, so you can put your name in there. That's what the dash is intended to be. Dear, say your name here. <laughs> Dear sir or madam, insert your name here. <clears throat> Dear whom it may concern. A Dear Mr. Gallery, I have been referred to you by a mutual friend. As his attorney, I am very interested in locating the missing Mr. Arthur Cornthwaite. And our associate mentioned your name as being one skilled in locating missing people, particularly those of Mr. Cornthwaite's persuasion. Thus, I have taken the liberty of contacting you. I'm a partner of an established legal firm in Gamwell. Mr. Arthur Cornthwaite is one of our clients and his attorneys, and as his attorneys, we hold certain documents in trust for him. It appears Mr. Cornthwaite has departed without notifying us of his movements. This leaves us in a quandary as to how to manage his estate in his absence without his, without his authority on such matters. We would like you to locate Mr. Cornthwaite and obtain from him his wishes in respect of this matter, or better still request... Did I skip a line? Shit. No, you're on the right place. That I'm he... scrolling back and forth on my phone, sir. i zoom in. <clears throat> or better still request that he contact us. If it should, heaven forbid, transpire that Mr. Cornthwaite is no longer with us, then we will need some evidence of same to proceed with his wishes as outlined 
in his last will and testament. Hopefully this is an unnecessary hopefully this is in an unnecessary contingency, but one which we must nevertheless consider in the light of Mr. Quinthwaite's mysterious departure. I hope that you are free to give this matter your immediate attention, and would like to extend an invitation to you to attend an interview at our offices as soon as is convenient, to discuss both the details and the situation at, and your professional fees. Anticipating a prompt reply, yours faithfully, Walter Dodge. Um, and then? I'm not sure what's ENCL actually stand for. Enclosed. Enclosed, okay. Enclosed, article from Gamble Gazette. <clears throat> which somebody else other than Lucas would like to read the enclosed. I have sent that to the chat as well. Lucas's eyes don't work well, so <laughs> this is why I'm having trouble. Gamewell Gazette, Gamewell Millionaire Absent, February 17th, 19... January, my bad, January 17th, 1925. Gamewell's most prosperous son, Arthur Cornthwaite, will not be seen at church over the next few weeks. Mr. Cornthwaite has apparently left the area for a time, possibly for a vacation or in relation to his studies. Some mystery surrounds Mr. Cornthwaite's departure, as it came without notice. However, an inspection of the mansion and the grounds by Sheriff Whitford has revealed no cause for alarm. The last person to speak to Mr. Cornthwaite was his attorney, Mr. Walter Dodge, on the 7th of this month. At that time, he gave no indication of his imminent departure, but according to Doc, Mr. Dodge, he did seem quite preoccupied, no doubt with his travel plans. We all know well that besides being a Gamwell landowner, Mr. Cornthwaite is also a millionaire, a scholar, a philanthropist, and an explorer. He may well be laying off the groundwork for some future exciting expedition, or perhaps just relaxing for time in New York. Gamwell citizens will no doubt remember fondly Mr. Cornthwaite's numerous generous donations to local charities and to the town library, and join us. Join with us in wishing him a safe and happy journey. So Gamwell is about 80 miles uh, outside of Boston. <clears throat> um, as this is um, Harold Gallery's profession and being his trusty sidekicks, I am going to use DM, fi DM Fiat and shove you all in a car and you're already pulling into uh, Gamwell, the town as you speak. Um, so we're taking a Fiat? That's what I was looking up. What's a 1920s fi yeah. Fiat look like? No, I'm saying so we don't have to do the bullshit of you guys going back and forth for 20 minutes about what the fuck you're going to do. I'm, I'm he accelerating. He the guy who could drive. I didn't. I almost <laughs> got to drive. That's started to talk about. I know. He can, though. No. Sort so, of. So I've pushed the game along. Um, but check So if you, you are now currently chatting, uh, pulling into Gamwell. Um, Gamwell What is, if I didn't want to do the thing? Look at I them. had the choice. These are nice looking cars. I like getting shoved in that Fiat. <laughs> Looks like it's only a two-seater there. We can squeeze up. We're friends. <laughs> Multiple <laughs> chauffeurs. <laughs> Gamwell is very much out of the way. It's a place where someone might buy an ice cream on a, or a tonic on a on the way to somewhere else, but that's all. You see a lot of large, uh, like, you know, multi-acre properties, houses set back well away from the road. Gamwell itself is basically one street with a, modern a few buildings. Daydream. You can see uh you could see a sign for a boarding house, you can see a sign for the Dodge Brothers, um, you see a sheriff, uh the Gamwell Gazette, you see a graveyard outside of town, a sheriff's office, town hall, town library. That's basically it. Probably like I said, a soda shop, uh, a burger place. You know, six or seven businesses very small place um you definitely could have had time to do some research ahead of time so if there's something that you want to have done prior i'll let you roll and i could give you something for that but otherwise we will pick up the scene as you're puttering into um puttering into town about noon time on i don't know what thursday february the 6th or something like that all right so were you saying that all the houses are they like estates like are they does it is this like a Concentration of very wealthy people? Uh, not all. I mean, you get the sense that a lot of it is farming community, but every once in a while you do see what looks to be, you know, it's a it's a very rural place. So you're going to have some folks who are farming the land and there seems to be more farming than like upper crust. But there are, you can tell, some property set back that have, you know, wealthy landowners, servants, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not a high concentration of that, but there are probably a handful. Oh, right. This is pre-segregation. 
And we're 80 miles outside Boston? Correct. Which, again, in this time and time of day, you may not have even... If you set out that morning, you may not even be there by... You know, I figured putting you there by lunchtime is probably fair. It's going to take some time to get there. It's 80 miles. The roads aren't great, so you can't travel 80 miles then as nearly as fast as you could now. So, theoretically, it may even take you a day to get there. I have no idea how long it would take you to drive 80 miles somewhat rurally in 1925. But it wouldn't be easy. Probably a couple, two, three hours. Yeah, so... We'll say it's lunch-ish time when you when you putter up to Gamwell. Uh, like I said, if there's anything you will decide to do that you could have done before you left, I can definitely let you have a roll on that. I'll give you each a roll of something if you decide. But otherwise, I just want to put you in Gamwell so we can start the actual written bit of the scenario. Um, would there be any public record of what Mr. Cornthwaite does for a living? Uh, if somebody would like to make some sort of role, I would allow a role for that. I've got somebody a decent can, library use. I feel the librarian could probably make a library use Brooks. role. I got probably better than mine. I got 25. 20, so it's all you. Yeah. Uh, 34. Is that by, is that by that half? Is, uh, that is going to be by half, because that's yeah. a 37. Uh, Remember, you can spend luck points as well. I don't need, need to. to. If you need to. <laughs> well, yes. If you're like just real close to an extreme, sometimes yeah. it's worthwhile. It is nice to remember that because I don't think about luck points ever. Just can't do it in common. Um, you learn two bits from that library use roll. Uh, looking through, you find some odd clippings and stuff. Uh, you don't find anything of the Gamwell Gazette, which is not surprising because a very small town paper, Boston doesn't yeah. give a shit. I um, assume so. But you do find some stuff from like the Boston Globe and some other things, uh, maybe New York Times. You do locate Arthur Cornwait, uh, Corn Wait. Corinth. Wait. Cornth. Wait. Yeah, not having fun pronouncing that. I, I kept wanting to say fun. Goldthwait. Well, nobody here can read it, so you could have called him, you know, spatula and no one would have cared. Um, but Dr. Cornth Waite uh, is an archaeologist, um, and in 1923, um, the uh, uh, Cornth Waite led a major expedition into South America. Um, which apparently suffered significant and tragic losses of lives. Um, Cornthwaite is reported to be the only survivor. And this is the one bit of information, or this is both parts together? Uh, both both parts. Okay. There's a couple bullet points. I did some random rolls to see what you can <clears throat> tell. Okay. Gotcha, this gotcha, was gotcha. South America, you said? Correct. But no, nothing more specific than that? No. Ah, I bet it was Peru. Ooh. This better not be a fucking pyramid in Lima. <laughs> I hear they're nice this time of year. Mm, sure. Quite warm and sunny. Almost subtropical. This time yes. of year probably is nice. Yes. That happened a little later, wasn't it? What? Peru and masks. Wasn't it a couple years later? No, yeah, you're, probably, you're probably you're probably really close. It was real close, yeah. <laughs> it's almost like they keep using the same time frames over and over and over for these games. So, you know... Because it takes place prior to masks, and masks takes 1925, place. 1925, in... it says. Is it 20? Multi-part I was say, I set in 1925. I would say, I thought it was 25. Yeah, masks happened in 20, started in 26, right? No, it started so in It's the, the new edition, the one that you guys are running there. Uh, epic multi-part campaign set in 1925. Oh, so the had campaign had set little, in Had the little prequel bit. Mm-hmm. So the Peru, because the Peru bit is supposed to be like several years ahead of time. I can pull yes. the book down and find out. Yeah, so yeah, it, may be, it may be, it may be, it may be. We need to go back and finish that fucking game. <laughs> Cornthwaite could have actually been part of that expedition and they just lied about the survivors. <laughs> so, uh, what do you want to do now that you've arrived in Gamwell? Anybody got anything major they need to do? Um, so we know what he did. Yep. We kind of know what happened. Are we, uh, where's the estate? Uh, well, we're in the town. Do we know where the estate is? Apparently a very small town, so it can't be hard to find. Again, is a state in town? Rural small town. It might not be hard to find if you know where you're going. Um, I'll stop by the sheriff's <laughs> office then. Uh, Yeah. No, if you want to stop by the uh, <clears throat> the sheriff's office, you can. Say archaeologist or anthropologist? Archaeologist. 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 Okay. You see um, a slightly heavyset man... Um, Probably mm, late fifties, early sixties. Um, wearing a um, wearing a nice suit. He does have a, sort of a sheriff star on his uh, sort of on his lapel. Uh, he appears to be sitting at a typewriter, um, click clacking away. Um, he seems to ignore you as you come in. What time of day is it, sir? Noonish. Noonish. 
the early luncheon, afternoon. The 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 luncheon late luncheon time. Good afternoon, chef. He looks up. Can I help you? A hero gallery. I reach out my hand. You see him look at you and look at your hand. Right. Uh, I'm investigating the disappearance of a Mr. Cornthwaite. I'm sure you're familiar? Dodge boys had you come into town, huh? When'd you fellas come into town? About five minutes ago. How long have we been standing here? <laughs> and if I talk to uh, the Haggerties, they'll confirm you weren't at there. You weren't staying at the boarding house last night. Engine's still warm. If you'd like to touch it, uh -huh. just means you've been driving. Yeah, that <laughs> means you ain't been around. It's not a good argument. I mean, I just kind of like look out the window back and forth. Not not exactly a big town. You'd notice us, I assume. Yes, this Fiat we drive. It's I'm, new. I'm pretty big, so you, yeah, you notice me. Mm. He gave me a branch. I'm gonna take it. No, well, I'll be checking to make sure nobody's seen you yet. Certainly. Uh, might you be able to direct me to the Coldwaite Estate? Why would you want to go there? Well, as I said, I'm investigating the disappearance. It would be nice to I start from looked. the beginning. Oh, yes, no of course, sign of, of foul play. Oh, That's yes, what I course. told the boys. Of course, yes, no. It's always, Those uh, three cowards want to go up and knock on the door themselves, they can. Three cowards? Yes, the Dodge brothers. I actually don't think it, I was aware that there were three of them. Lucas wasn't, so that's interesting. It's called <clears throat> Seeding the Plot, Advancing the Storyline. Yes, well, uh, you know, when you're hired to do a job, you start from the beginning, don't you? Well. I'm sure, as a... As the law in town, here's what I can tell you. He, in the last few weeks, he fired all of his servants, out-of-towners, by the way. Um, and then... He disappeared. No sign of his vehicle. No sign of foul play. No sign of violence. House and property look fine. That's what I told the Dodge brothers. It's their job to take care of him. My job is to take care of the town. Certainly. And the people in it. Mm. Don't know what's up. Uh, I don't know what's really going on with uh, Mr. Cornwaith, but I'm sure he will turn up soon. Right. So the house is which direction? This business is ridiculous. And you could just tell us we'd be out of your hair. It's that easy. It's ten miles west of town. I'm sure the property is locked. And I'd appreciate it if we didn't have so many out-of-towners running around the fields outside of Gamwell. So... Go talk to the Dodge Brothers if you like. But I'd appreciate it if y'all moseyed out of town as soon as possible. And he spins around and starts typing again. About the, the boarding house, though. Um, where is that also? It's the sign that says boarding house. There's like six buildings in town. Yeah, it's probably very easy to find. It's fine. I'm just confirming, but... Yes. <laughs> okay, sure. thank Th you. Sure, a thorough investigation has happened so far. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Okay, I'll go to the attorney's place, the Dodges. Anybody have a decent uh, bit of psychology? Uh, he, I, I have a 40, and he's got, I got a 25. 50. Yeah, he's got a 50. I, I'll, I'll let one roll on psychology. I'm going to roll under. Just under? Like so under it's 50. golf rules. Low is better. Okay. Uh, no. No. It, there's definitely something that set him off specifically. You can't you can't pinpoint it. But you got enough to know. At first, it was just annoyance that somebody was in the sheriff's office. But something that um, the private investigator said specifically turned him. You you can't identify it, but you're sure something about that line of inquiry really pissed him off. Likely that I'm trying to do the job he already did. I mean, mm. he's got a good enough psychology role that there's something else. There. He said hello. Can you tell me where the house is? Maybe it was his voice. I, I told him, yeah, it could be that I'm foreign. <laughs> Just his face. It pisses off I everybody. I hate these fucking emo kids. <laughs> I am an, I'm a 32 app. Not looking good here, guys. 
It's called dogs, meanie level. <laughs> start, dogs start growling. Kids go silent. It's just, it's a bad day for everybody. I'm the second least attractive person. Third least attractive. I'm, I'm of the four. I fall into third place. <laughs> <laughs> so where would you it's like great. to go? It's right where I want to be. Good. In the boy band, you're the fat one. He he mentioned Perfect. pronounced footone. <laughs> <laughs> he mentioned going to the lawyer's place. Sure. Yeah. Is that close? Where was the the address? I thought that was somewhere else. It didn't say it's a city just, on it. It's just a couple it of did. buildings. 14th, 14th Main Street, 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 Street Gamble. So it's here. Oh, yeah. It's it's like literally it? next door. Like walk, the, I'll know, just yeah. walk straight to it. Yeah, we can walk there. I, the only reason is like boarding house. So if there's a bunch of out of towners running around and or former employees, no, that have we should definitely get back in the car and read. peel out. <laughs> If anything, turn the car so the tires, when the wheels spin, they throw the rocks yeah. and or debris at. It's probably a dirt road, dude. Oh, yeah. Rocks and or debris. <laughs> I um, was thinking gravel. Horse apples. You uh, walk over to the Dodge Brothers, which appears to be a small sort of country bumpkin, you know, office. The bell rings. You see a, you see a um, middle-aged man, uh, receding hairline. Um, fairly nice done-up suit. Oh, uh, uh, hello, my name is uh, Reginald Dodge. I assume uh, that that one of you is the private investigator. That would be me, sir. Ah, uh, yes, yes. And he goes to shake your hand. Yes. He calls back, Walter, Herbert, they're here. So people in this town do shake hands, then. Yes, yes, of course. Bloke it's, next it's the only civilized thing to do. Bloke next door is a bit of a dick. Ah, the sheriff. Yeah. Hmm. He clearly has no comment. Um. The three uh, Dodge brothers assemble. You can tell that they are all, and this is one of the things that one of the reasons why I wanted the PDF because I wanted to share some of these images. They are the saddest sack shit looking trio. I love this photo. I will take a photo and send it to the chat. They look like almost like a a, a shitty, um, sad acapella group. Um, <laughs> the art is awesome, like fantastic. You're talking. I can see the two smiling faces to the right, and I'm like, they don't look sad. No, no, no. Those are those are happy people. Not these bumpkins. They all look just a little dead inside. Why did they do that? So the one that me- me- greeted us initially is the back right. Uh, you can choose whichever you want. No, actually, it does tell me which one is the mustached one. Uh, oh, Walter is the mustache one. He's the left. Yeah. The one on the right and the left both have mustaches. The one on the right? I don't nah, think the one on the right has just, a mustache. I think, I think that's Shadow. It looks like a Hitler stash on mine. It does look like a Hitler stash because of the lighting well, down here. It the wouldn't time. be out of taste at, uh, at this point in time. Not that's, for another yeah. 10 years. <laughs> yeah, it's got a minute. Yes. Um, um, he's a fan of Charlie Chaplin. There's the guy. Can't get my fucking cookie open. Child. God damn. Oh, chocolate with white macadamia. So, um, yes, white um, chocolate chip. I know. So they <laughs> they take you into a small office. They sit down. They ask you if they can make you, you know, uh, a cup of tea or something. Oh yes, please. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, introductions all around. Um, yes, yes. I, I hope this means since you've come to Gamwell that you'll uh, you'll find what happened uh, to Mister Cornwaith. Yes. Uh, from your letter, it seems as though you know nothing. Uh, yes. No. He was. Um, he was speaking to us about um, this sort of you know, normal business, um, and then uh, we, after some some requests, we hadn't heard from him for a, a little while, so we went out to the house and weren't able to find him. What sort of requests? Um, you know, we sort of um, uh, we keep his books, his accounts, his will, um, sort of the comings and goings of his property, um, his investments, so on and so forth. Um, we managed that for him. When was his will last updated? Uh, it's been a little while. Not not enough that you would immediately strike it as relevant. Okay. Maybe last year. <clears throat> Who received anything from the will if he was to pass? Uh, there is. Uh, he says. Um, unfortunately, uh, the details of the will. Um, or something that I that I that I cannot reveal. Okay. Is there somebody that we could who could benefit from him uh, dying? Uh, <laughs> um, no, not 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 particularly. Um, there are there is no there is. Uh, they kind of confer softly with each other. Uh, in terms of your investigation, we do not believe that there is 
uh, there, there is... We believe what you're asking. And in terms of the will, we can confirm that there is no direct next of kin. The assets gotcha. would be um, donated and, and, and divvied and sold off. So he's a man of good means. Uh, yes, yes, quite. Well, we could probably assume that based on how the Gazette wrote. You're, you're happy to... to we, you, we can't provide you the will, of course, uh, given our profession, but if you'd like to look over his ledgers, um, we believe that that would be all right. Might be a good idea. Yeah, not, not a bad idea to look at that. Anybody you have mind? an accounting sure. role? I have a 40. Anyone have better? I match. I have five. Can you both work? <laughs> there are numbers here. 32. Uh, Cornthwaite is indeed a wealthy man and likely to remain so. He has a number of sound investments and will continue, his estate will continue to make money, presuming he's alive. Um, you see that uh, his last major expedition um, was to South America in 1923, okay. like, yeah. and you could see that there were a lot of hiring of men and transport of equipment to South America. Did he bring anything back from that? Did he get any kind of given he was the only one that returned from the, at least the last expedition, did he come back with anything that's marked up there? Uh, uh, anything give that... me an interval. Okay. 71, my aim is 80, so I'm under. The only, the only thing... So you have a period where, like, you can clearly see supplies are being yes. um, purchased. And then there's obviously a gap where nothing was spent. Mm-hmm. The very next thing is paying off passage for one ticket back from South America. Gotcha. One ticket, one passenger, you know. So no, nothing. Cargo major. class. Yeah, it wasn't like he bought a barge back of, mm-hmm. of valuables. Whatever he brought back would have probably been himself and a trunk, which is shocking considering the amount of shit and people he took. Yeah, the things the things he took versus what he brought back was m- drastically less. What were what was customs like back then? Like, do they have to like if they brought back like a priceless artifact, do they have to go through customs? Nineteen twenties, uh, uh, probably uh, not. The priceless artifact was that's a nice bag you have there. Oh, Thank I mean, you. Like I just got it. My uh, one of my things that loaded I, with things. It's fascinating to think about customs now. My parents went to; they've only gone out of the states one time. They went to Jamaica, and this would have been probably in like the early to mid nineties. Mm-hmm. And my dad told me he lost his wallet in Jamaica, and they didn't have passports. And so they're like, "Oh, you're going back to Indiana." And my dad literally says to the customs guys, "Like, yeah, I'm a big, real big fan of basketball." As his identifier of, "Yes, I am from Indiana." And they let him in. <laughs> like, so thinking about customs that those of us of this generation or okay. younger generations have gone through, customs was drastically different 20 plus years ago. God knows what it was 100 years ago. Uh, I think historically there wasn't really any sort of customs unless it was um, like a controlled substance or like arms. Or, yeah, or firearms. Yeah. That's yeah. fair. Which I, I know based on your stuff with masks like we have a right to bear arms bringing guns into europe was very much hard to do we got it to work uh things that you can buy in the sears and robot catalog from the 20s uh, a tommy gun yeah the classic choice Absolutely. um mm-hmm. god bless america um <laughs> uh something that you do notice because yes. it was brought up um uh you don't see anything you you see there's accounts of, of newer things after that. Yeah. You know, furnishings, um, food, larder, everything like that. You don't see any entries for domestic staff. Gotcha. Because he, he did say they're the hired out of towners. Correct. Uh, do you know anything about the staff? It seems as though the staff was fired before he took off. Uh, that is not something that we uh, necessarily managed. Never met them? Uh, no, we did. Um, Anyone strange? Not not particularly remarkable. Where were they uh, from? I think he had two staff. Also, you, I'd have to dig. A, a passing thing that the sheriff said was the out-of-towners are running about the fields. Was that just a turn of phrase, or was he being more direct in the statement that there literally are people just running around in the fields? Uh, are you asking the DM, or are you asking the ether? I'm asking the person. Okay. <laughs> Hence why I stated. It's a good question. It's as like a passing I wasn't sure statement. You were looking the at sheriff. Me, so I wasn't sure if you were asking just in general. Well, more of the idea is 
my character would look at yours because we were there listening. I'm making sure I'm repeating what we heard accurately. Fair. Oh. Oh. That might explain a few things. You said you said that he that the sheriff was was particularly perturbed. Uh, yes. Um one of the uh who is it? Uh Seb Seb Watkins. Um it's a, a farmer that 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 neighbors uh the Cornwaith estate. Um uh he reported a lost horse this morning. Um, that's pretty unusual. I would presume that the sheriff is concerned about a missing horse and then four men show up into town. We don't get a lot of... He we don't did, get a he, lot of strangers. He did ask us if we were staying at the boarding house. Uh, there would be nowhere else to stay. It's quite worried as to whether or not anyone else had even seen us. It sounds as though he's decided that you have kidnapped the Watkins horse. Yes, in our ah. fiat. I like it's how got, the fiat has become a thing since that's not at all. Where it's I funny as fuck, and we're going to no, get going with it. It was a fiat. That's what we said. <laughs> you said you, I'm using DM, DM's fiat to force you into the car and to. We're yep. going to roll it. Yep. No, I, under, I understand. <laughs> I am aware. We have a fiat. Um, <laughs> we bought it together. Give them an inch, and they'll take a mile. (laughs) If we find the horse and it's alive, we're taking it. Um, He's going to drag our Fiat. A carriage. So, yeah, he reported a missing horse. Got it. And is Uh, uh, missing livestock unusual here? A a bit. Um, uh, Livestock being attacked by... Wolves, or you know, something like that, is not unheard of. But usually, there's a carcass. My understanding is that Seb went out and couldn't find one. So. Could it not just simply leap a fence and take off? It's possible, but uh, it's a fairly tight knit community around here. Usually, if that happens, the horses or or any other animals that have gotten loose are found relatively quickly <clears throat> and returned. I would assume, if unharmed. Correct. Um, it's possible that a neighbor is. I'm with it. Yes. Hoarding horse. Perhaps we should go speak to this Mr. Watkins. You said he's he's on their estate or no? It's, no, it's, it's, it's a neighboring. Neighbor, neighboring, neighboring estate. Okay. I misheard at the beginning. Uh, do you happen to have a key to Mr. Quantwaite's estate? Of course. Um, I believe I was looking to answer your other question because I know that there are names in here. I just have to find it. That's fine. Uh, blah, 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 blah. They hand you... Oh, the servants, right? Yes. Yeah. It's written in here, but I gotta find it. I'm pretty sure there were two. I think there was, a, like, a gardener and a maid, but... That's fine. Know. We can note off to the side. Once you find them, you can let us know. Um, I believe they hand you... Yes, they hand you two keys. Um, one is for the front door and one is for the back. Okay. From... You, go ahead. Uh, you are more than welcome, if you'd like, to, uh, stay on the property, if that's useful. Um, obviously, it will be dark soon. Um, uh, we do ask, obviously, that you avoid any damage to the property. Uh, Certainly. Uh, Is there a garage? Int by five rolls for everybody. Int by five. Got 42. By half. Oh, by half. Phil. Hmm. Is that the? It'd be your. It'd be your main role. You're seventy five. You're eighty. You're. Yeah, I got. I have an eighty in, and I got a forty two. But in by five is what again? Is that it, it'd role? be that? It'd be that eighty. He says in by five, and it confuses everybody. He just should just say in. It's a six head thing. Because okay, so then I got it by five. Yeah, it I got it by. Be I almost got half, but I passed. Um, I passed too. Then. <laughs> I forget that it's it's. it's yeah, all of you realize this, but probably since Doctor Delacroix, you get more of it. These guys are the way that the will probably is written. They're going to benefit. They're going to benefit extremely from selling off the property. That's where they're going to make their money. So if he's pissed off to Europe, then they're sitting here minding the store without making any money. They're set to make an extreme amount of money if they can sell off his property and sell off his, you know, all of his goods. Because whatever is not being donated to the local whatever or the institute of blah, blah, blah. They is get. shit that they are going to sell and take a hefty commission on. Got it. So they sure as fuck don't want you damaging anything because that's how they're going to make money. 
um, which is odd. Which is a little, it's a little odd, but you get the sense that um, that these sort of sniveling cowards are really, really. Meta note: Burn the house down. <laughs> um, Rave. Is it a garage? Is it do what? A garage. No, there's no garage. You is would it, say garage. Actually, is so. is, is there a Fucking is there a barn? Uh, there's a shed. There's a gardening shed. Hmm. Um, fair. We have we have arranged for um, accommodation at the boarding house if you prefer. Uh, the estate is uh, about ten miles outside of town, and the terrain is fairly rough. Luckily, we have our vehicle. Luckily, you have DM Fiat to get you. There. We do um, special brand. We keep rolling, making rolling, model, rolling, rolling. Uh, at at good together. points in the story, rolls are made at disadvantage and half. <laughs> In the ledger, what was the like neck? What was the most previous prior to his disappearance? Ex- 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 uh, exploration besides South America. So you show? want to go farther back than yeah, South America? That's a good call. Um, it was probably like ten years prior. Um, also to South America. It okay. sounds like it seems like he is focused on South America. Okay. Do we see? <clears throat> Like regularities in spendings from that trip the, to the, the two the expeditions, and, mo- and more importantly, is there differences between that and like after the latest one? In terms of like what he's spending money on, yeah, no, okay. there's no uh, regularity. I will allow another counting roll to somebody who's if that idea is brought up while you're looking at the ledgers. Either one of you can make it. I don't care. I assume everybody's looking at it, so somebody can roll. Ooh, not that time. I got a 71. That is way over. I'll let Alex roll. Alex hasn't had to have a... Had for had to have Maybe you fun. catch something I missed. Even higher than you. Yeah. All right. No one knows a damn thing. Hang on, different. We tried. There, yes, there is, a, there is a gardener and a servant. Gardener and servant. Didn't give it names. If it did, it didn't give it in this section. I'll look somewhere else. No problem. How exactly are they still on the estate did mr cornthwaite make his money doesn't seem like between such lengthy expeditions that he's invested in like general electric and he's connected to the rockefellers and oil okay. like i mean with the accounting rules that have been made these guys who look at it and be like holy shit this guy bought stocks in apple you know what I mean? Like, so he's, he's new money. Uh, he, did he, did, or didn't he inherit? Uh, inherit? He he's the prosperous son of a. Uh, I didn't say the thing. Yeah, pro- most prosperous. Nope, never mind. It's a it's a title they gave him. The town gave him. Never mind. He. It's blast from the past money. <laughs> it seemed he was a a millionaire. So at no, it's money he had. At no point in the ledger does it ever show like not having money if that makes sense like there's okay. always been money so you could presume for you could also ask if you want to obviously no, i mean I, I, okay i was how far okay. back so you're, your character is asking yes. the characters uh yes no um he is uh he, he comes from uh, uh um he comes from wealth he inherited a fortune after the death of his parents um 25 30 years ago and did he grow that wealth or has he been largely living off that wealth no it's uh, and that's again what he can confirm like he's he's invested it soundly he is okay. making a profit how far back do the ledgers go um probably 10 15 years i'm trying he's to think been, when he his, there's a weird no, scrawling i can, tell, I can probably tell you the exact to i'm gonna say America. like uh, yeah. how long has he been working with you well, hold on. That's question that was a good, good question. Oh, sorry, not as far back as I thought it was. My bad. Nineteen nineteen. Hmm. Uh, he came to he purchased years. he purchased the estate in nineteen nineteen. For some reason, I thought that was like nineteen oh nine. My bad. Oh, good. Where was he living before? Uh, I believe he lived uh, in New York. <laughs> Makes sense with the Rockefeller and Lake. So, your question again. So you get the sense that he was independently wealthy, he went to school, became an archaeologist, invested in a lot of stuff, did some jaunting around, some travel, had this thing in South, you know, bought this property, had this thing in South America, 
which is the only reason why the Dodge brothers have record of it. They're the only goddamn lawyers in town. So yeah, who else fair. is he going to work with? Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, does anyone have anything else or should we move on to the estate? I don't know that I want to move to the estate necessarily. You want to talk to Seb first. I want to talk to somebody who can vouch for these guys. Or unvouch for these guys. Sure. Who would you like? To, where would you like to go? Probably not the sheriff because he doesn't like. Well, them yeah. Anyway. Go to the boarding house. And I was going to say we check the boarding it. house. Um, what else is in the town? Either boarding house or a pub or a bar, if there's one a tavern. Oh, well, nineteen twenty-five. Yeah, that oh, stuff's supposed. Yeah. <laughs> if if, if, if they hole. are, uh, it's in someone's farm, in the basement <laughs> yeah. of the boarding house. Uh, the other <laughs> signs that you see for local establishments would be, um, uh, you do see a sign for a boarding house, the Gamwell Gazette, oh, that's right, the sheriff's paper. office, the town hall, the town library, and uh, you did see a sign for a graveyard. I don't know that that's a place that you want to visit, but you did see a sign for a graveyard. Outside. We might visit it at some point. The library uh, or yeah. newspaper <laughs> might be decent places to to look for I, what I, specifically. Yeah, though. the yeah the library. Clues, goddamn yeah, you! I newspaper is going to follow stories. I, I want info on these guys. Uh, let's okay. The newspaper might have further um, news and paper. yeah, like clippings that we wouldn't know about. Past, well, past pressed pieces. Uh, I'm good with the library. It kind of seems fitting. Because um, we can kind of split for information split gathering. Want, yeah. yeah. Uh, do we want to go two and two? Who's got better people skills? I can intimidate really well. He can fast talk. He might get real speaky intimidate with the... the country bumpkin. See how that goes for you. I don't think... Everybody's to... armed to the teeth and the law doesn't like you. So, he, you know, I got a 60 and intimidate. I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah, I do not have very good interpersonal skills. Seems that my, might be a thing we're all lacking in. My persuade is decent, but... But you had to buy those guns. Uh, yeah, that's my fucking intimidate. He's got fast talk. He can just... Open carry. Ramble at them. <laughs> so, who's going where? What are we doing? I'm going to the library. Okay, going to the library. Why don't you two go to the newspaper and I'll go with them to the library. Okay. Sounds do like a plan. Do you want to do the newspaper or the library first? Actually, I will decide unless you want me to. Unless, what do you guys want to do? I already offered you. Uh, I made my decision on what I want to do, but newspaper, good. That's where he you was. Can, you're the DM. You just tell us what you want us to do. I know. Um, uh, the sign says Gamwell Gazette, established 1847. Um, is a very small and cluttered office. You can hear. You can kind of smell the ink. Um, you can see sort of a uh, a sweaty, uh, uh, round faced older man. Um, Sort of stripped to the dress shirt, and you can see he's kind of working presses and setting type in the back. Um, uh, there is a um, there's a younger man who is sort of talking to him, uh, probably in his thirties, um, sort of yelling out what the type should be set, and he seems to be scribbling some notes and and sort of just generally chit chat back and forth. I want to pause, rewind a little a, a bit. He specifically, Lucas's, Lucas's character, Harold, was specifically hired by the Dodge Brothers. Correct. They what did kind offer of... to pay you a $100 bonus to locate Mr. Cornwaith with a $100 bonus if you have the answer within the week. Additional? Yep, so 200 bucks if you can figure out the answer in the next seven days. Not bad. Where in Seems kind of high. It makes me even more suspicious. <laughs> That's because you've watched any Hanna-Barbera ever. I also do assume that's partly because I mean no he I mean he 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 uh, seeded it by saying that basically these guys are the ones to probably most profit from this guy disappearing. Well, you were asking who is most likely yeah. to profit. These guys would probably profit. I mean, local charities or whatever the else the shit is going to profit the most, but they're going to get a cut of anything that gets sold. So, like, what would Harold slash us as a unit? Our reputation be for them to for them to hire us versus something you guys else. are the Scooby Doo gang. I'm apparently really good at what I do. He's a private investigator who finds people. He was the cheapest. Does option. he find people? Well, roll for. Well, it. that's what I'm trying to understand. Like <laughs> In this story, did, I did, do. Did they hire bumbling dunces or did they no, hire the A team? No, they did hire. Uh, uh, 
What's your character's name? Harold Gallery? Gallery. Harold Gallery is a successful private investigator prior to this. Now, with Lucas in control. Well, no. That's that's understood. I have foil stamped name cards. (laughs) They're embossed. Okay. (laughs) They're embossed. No, that that somewhat helps. I feel um, shame just being they're not his name. This they're guy. just embossed cards. Yeah, it's somebody else's out. name, but I have them. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald um, Falloway is the uh, the Undertaker. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you do see uh, the the is the uh, typesetter played by Burgess Meredith? Uh, oh, can it be though? No, I would say this is more. Uh, it's a really old episode of Twilight Zone. He plays uh, like the devil who like oh, joins man. a gazette. He definitely looks like Fucking somebody, awesome. but I wouldn't say that. It's a great. This episode. guy looks more like uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Boss Haas. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Okay. okay. The smiling guy in the hat you saw the corner of the photo. Yeah, yeah that's him. Okay. The typesetter's played more like by Boss Haas. Fine. Uh, the other guy, the young guy, uh, looks a little more almost like uh, Italian stereotype: lean, uh, slick back hair. Pencil behind the ear. Sure. Big smile. Um, as you walk in, he says, "Oh, uh, welcome to the welcome uh, to the welcome to the uh, Gamwell Gazette." And he goes rushing up to you, uh, sticks his hand out, big long arms. He's like, uh, "He's like, I'm I'm Joe Varelli, uh, lead reporter for the Gamwell Gazette. What brings you to town?" One of them is uh, Harold Galloway. Gather was that was that? I keep wanting to say Galloway. One name, or was that Joe Varelli? Joe Varelli. He said it really quickly, so... No, 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 this guy is... ah, This dude's connected. He's like, (laughs) he's like, you see that he's got, like, the notepad, and he's itching to have a reason to pull the pencil out from behind his ear. Told you, typical stereotypes. Cop, criminal, fast talker. Um, we were brought in by... you're what, there. You're, you're, you weren't there. I thought, I thought that's where we were. No. You're at the, you library. Went to the library. Oh, we went to the Would library. Would you like to swap positions? No, it's fine. <laughs> you want to switch? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Edit that part out. <laughs> I think it'd be better with well, you over here than me. You already had an idea set up for what you're looking for. Maybe you did go. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, what what can I do for you, gents? Welcome to town. What brings you to Gamwell? Uh, so, we're investigating the disappearance of uh, of a local. Oh, you don't say. And that all of a sudden you see that notepad come out. And uh, who are you, sir? Harold Gallery. Harold Gallery. I see. Did the Dodge Brothers bring you in? Yes. Ah, I see. And you see he's starting to take notes. I, I literally just reach over and grab the notepad and just slowly pull it out of his hand. Ah. The story gets more interesting. Stan! He yells. <laughs> and the portly boss Haas guy kind of goes over the corner and is like, uh, yes. Uh, and like, as I'm talking, I'm like tearing out that paper, the page, just real slowly. <laughs> can I... Can we can we help you, gents? Yes, we're investigating the disappearance of Mr. Cornthwaite. Uh, yes, uh, I'd I'd heard about that. Uh, we don't necessarily know. Uh, you know, the the Gamwell's position, of course, is that he's uh, likely run off uh, to New York or somewhere else. I'm sure he'll show back up. Sure, sure. He's um, disappeared. I tell you. I pull out the, his I pull out the little pads. clipping. And I say, uh, at some point, you posted this piece here about his. Ex- uh, was it his, uh, it's his, a puff his piece, I tell you. Stan, it's a puff piece. I'm telling you, it's not accurate. You don't know that, Joe. It's a puff piece. Do you have anything on file from any of his... Anything else with his name in it? Uh, sure. Um, and Stan says, uh, you're more... Joe, calm down. Sorry. He really thinks that he's going to win a Pulitzer, which I hope is not an anachronistic joke at this time. Yes, no, I'm, I'm quite sure he will. Um... Just crumple up the piece of paper and toss it behind me. <laughs> you see him. He, he he sort of yells at Joe, and Joe goes over to sets the type, but he keeps giving you furtive glances. Anyway, slide the notebook in his upper pocket. You are more than welcome. <laughs> you are more than welcome to take a look at any of our back issues. They're stored in the back. All right. Yes, it's relatively new. It's a new joke. It's topical. <laughs> it's topical. <laughs> I can get an award for this? He's like, <laughs> he's like, there have only been seven so far. I'm going to be the eighth. <laughs> um, We're pulling for you. But yeah, he basically indicates a room in the back uh, with all the back issues. You're more than happy to look through them if you like. Uh, what kind of role would that be to Hi. library use? That, that would be good that you have the yeah, other I library. Believe can, I believe you can aid as well. Can you not in this game? I, I only have a 20. Do you have to set the succeed uh, to aid? Seven. 
I think there's. Yeah. I, I, he's yeah. good. I think a seven. Rolled out with a seven. Is that an extreme? Yeah, I think what you have a seventy-five like me, or what's your library use? Uh, my library use is fifty-five. Okay, so, so you're extreme. Hang on, it's, it's not eleven. That. I have a seventy-five. So, yeah, it's an extreme. Oh, oh, what? Shit, you're right. Never mind. I'm I'm dumb. I succeeded wonderfully. <clears throat> so Dave just walks in and just goes, "Uh, this one, <laughs> just <laughs> this one, this one." Just starts pulling them out. Um, you're able to find um numerous um and references to Cornwait all the way back to his arrival in 1919. Opening fets, attending tea parties, donating to the church, winning bridge nights, giving books to the library, and so on. This isn't really so much a newspaper as it's like a local newsletter. Like it's we're not we're not breaking news here, you know what I mean? So I don't know if any of you grew up in a small enough town, but I had a small town newspaper and like half the time it was like, so-and-so says Larry was out late last night. You know, like it's dumb shit and the people eat the small town gossip up. Yeah, it's a gossip column, basically. He's the local millionaire, so yes, there's a fuck ton of articles on him. Anything of note of his, uh, any strange activities or strange behavior, anything like that come up? Anything, in like recent issues, anything around the expedition return, and also around the expedition and return, yes. No. Uh, Neat. You you start looking at some things, hmm. and something catches your eye in I terms of a news article. Ow. Yeah, it's the corner of a table or something. <laughs> Son of a bitch. And that's Paper how cut. Dave died. <laughs> Got a horrible eye infection. They took his skull. What? No, he slipped. He hit his his eye on the table. <laughs> Just um, slipped. And you realize because you happen to notice that it says something about, at first you think it says Sheriff Whitford, even though you're looking at articles from quite some time ago, you, you just, you're just poking around. Um, I but, would hope with a crit like that, I'm poking selectively. <laughs> um, you stumble across the handout that I just sent. I will uh, let you uh, take a look at that. And uh, we'll go to the folks in the town library. 